Alrighty guys, the day has finally arrived. Can AMD take back the throne with the 5800X3D? Is this fast enough to catch up to the Alder Lake CPUs? If you guys haven't seen the previous video in there, Alder Lake absolutely murders stock Zen 3. It's significantly faster to the tune of up to 55% six core versus six core. So that is absolutely staggering. So I was very curious. I was like, all right, can the X3D really make up for it? So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. Who's the best? Were the reviews right? Or were they misleading? Maybe this isn't as fast as everybody thinks it is because they don't test CPUs properly. So that's what we're gonna be checking out today. The absolute maximum CPU limited gaming tests on Alder Lake versus 5800X 3D. Alrighty guys, we're just gonna jump right on into it. If you're unfamiliar with the way the benchmark suite is going, I do have links to previous videos down below, as well as all the test specs and everything, if you're interested in checking those out in the video description. So alrighty guys, let's go ahead and just jump right into those benchmarks as the conclusion is going to be quite long on this one as we're wrapping up this series. So kicking things off with Borderlands 3, we have the stock 5800X 3D with 3200C16 memory, same as the rest of the test suite, coming in at 239 FPS on average and 164 on the 1% lows. With tuned memory up to 3733C14, that bumps us up a little bit, up to 243 FPS on average and 174 on the 1% low. So that's a decent increase, but not major. And you're gonna notice that throughout all the tests that the extra RAM or the lower latency RAM does help a little bit, but it's not a big deal. So in this particular test, we see a commanding lead over the Alder Lake CPUs. The 12700K overclock comes in at 221 FPS on average and 157 on the 1% low. Ironically enough, the 12600K is slightly faster at 158, but both of these are behind. So in this particular test, we start off very strong with the 5800X 3D. However, it doesn't last very long. Switching on over to Cyberpunk 2077, we have the stock 5800X3D comes in at 189 FPS on average, 119 on the 1% low. When we tune the memory, we get that up to 194 FPS on average and 128 on the 1% low. In comparison to the 12700K, that comes in at 205 FPS on average when tuned and overclocked, and up to 145 on the 1% low, taking a significant lead over the X3D. And taking a look at the 12600K when tuned and overclocked, that comes in at 199 FPS on average and 137 on the 1% low, also taking a lead over the X3D. Next up is Far Cry 5. The stock 5800X3D comes in at 243 FPS on average, 174 on the 1% low. Now this game does not see many gains with the tuned memory going up to 248 FPS on average and 179 on the 1% low. So just a minor bump there. Compared to the 12700K overclock that comes in at 254 FPS on average, just slightly ahead, but 193 on the 1% lows, which is significantly ahead. And then taking a look at the 12600K that comes in at 244 45 FPS on average, right about where the 5800X3D is. However, it does keep the advantage on the 1% low at 185. All right, next we have Gears 5. The stock X3D comes in at 217 FPS on average and 172 on the 1% low. Does see a nice little bump in this game with the tuned memory, coming in at 237 FPS on average and 186 on the 1% low. Compared to the 12700K overclock, that comes in at 260 FPS on average and 206 on the 1% low. So another big win for the Alder Lake CPU on this particular game. Taking a look at the 12600K overclock, that's 254 FPS on average and 199 on the 1% low. Once again, that is another win for Alder Lake. Next up is Halo Infinite. We have the stock X3D coming in at 256 FPS on average and 176 on the 1% low. That gets bumped up to 262 FPS on average and then 185 on the 1% low with tuned memory. So a little bit of a bump, but nothing major. Once again, same thing that we've been seeing. In comparison to the 12700K overclock, that comes in at 271 FPS on average, slightly ahead, and then 205 on the 1% low. So we're starting to see a pattern here. Those 1% lows are significantly higher in a lot of titles on the Alder Lake CPUs. Compared to the 12600K, that comes in at 259 FPS on average, so right around where the X3D is. But once again, this one actually has a higher 1% low at 210, likely due to its higher frequency, making it much, much better in this particular title than the 5800X3D. 
Next game is Horizon Zero Dawn, and this is where we really see the benefits of the 3D cache come into play, as the stock and tuned version are virtually identical. So we have 217 FPS on average for stock and 154 on the 1% low. That goes up 1 to 218 and 1 to 155 with the tuned memory. So really a nothing burger here. In comparison to the 12700K, that comes in at 235 FPS on average, slightly ahead of the X3D, and then 169 on the 1% low, which is a nice lead over the X3D. Taking a look at the 12600K, that comes in at 233 FPS on average, and 168 on the 1% low, virtually the same as the 12700K. Next up is StarCraft 2, and we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look at this one, as this is where the X3D seems to fall down. It seems to not scale with all games, as we're aware, but this is a real problem, and we'll talk about this more later. Anyways, we have the stock and overclock versions coming in the same, 336 and 338 on average, and then we have the 241 on the 1% low for both of the X3D tests. So compared to the 12700K, that comes in at 447 FPS on average and 311 on the 1% lows. So in this particular title, the Alder Lake CPUs are just miles ahead. Now, if we take a look at this 241 1% low on the X3D, it's identical to a tuned and overclocked 5600. So in this game, the extra cache does virtually nothing. Now, you don't need to tune memory like you do on the stock Zen 3 systems, but if you do have some Samsung B-Die, in this particular game, a generic cheapo Zen 3 will match the 5800X3D. Right, next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The stock 5800X3D comes in at 237 FPS on average, 162 on the 1% low. With the tuned memory, that comes in at 240 FPS on average and 167 on the 1% low. Now, this is another game where the X3D does very, very well and actually takes the lead. Compared to the 12700K, that comes in at 248 FPS on average, so it has a slightly higher average, but it only has 162 on the 1% low. So the tuned and overclocked X3D does have the win in this particular game. Although it's narrow, it's there. And compared to the 12600K, that comes in at 235 FPS on average, so right about on par with the X3D, but 154 on the 1% low, so a nice win for the X3D over the 12600K in this title. Watch Dogs Legion is very similar. This scales very well with the 3D cache. As we can see here, the stock X3D comes in at 165 FPS on average and 121 on the 1% low. But you can also see that the memory tuning makes a big difference in this title, bringing that all the way up to 178 FPS on average and 134 on the 1% low. So that's a pretty big jump from memory tuning on the X3D. And that actually allows for a win over the 2700K, which comes in with 168 FPS on average and 132 on the 1% low. So it's a margin of error win, but it's still a win nonetheless. And then we have the 12600K at 162 FPS on average and 127 on the 1% low. So under some circumstances, it does make sense to still use Samsung B-Die, even with a 5800X 3D, as that gives you a pretty big performance uplift in certain circumstances. And then for our last PC game, we're going to be taking a look at The Witcher 3. We have the stock X3D coming in at 270 FPS on average and 165 on the 1% low. That gets bumped up to 275 FPS on average and then 176 on the 1% low with the tuned memory. Compared to the 12700K overclock, that's 266 FPS on average, so it's a little bit behind the X3D on average. However, it's significantly ahead on the 1% low at 194 FPS compared to 167. The 12600K comes in at 247 FPS on average, good bit behind the X3D, but 188 on the 1% low, putting it significantly ahead, meaning that Honestly, this is going to be a better gaming experience than having these high averages. That's why I always say, don't really worry about the averages. I just put them in there if you guys are curious, but it's the 1% lows that make the most difference. All right, so time to move on to some emulation. We're gonna be taking a look at the CMU emulator using Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 720p with a 240 FPS cap. So this way we can see how fast these CPUs really are. And in this title, well, it doesn't matter if you have tuned memory or not. The X3Ds come in at 119 FPS on average and 96 on the 1% low. 
compared to the 12700K that comes in at 130 FPS on average and 107 on the 1% low. And taking a look at the 12600K that comes in with the identical 130 and 107. So you can see here, there's a clear advantage in this emulator using the uh, Alder Lake architecture over the Zen 3D. Now, if we take a look at the just regular Zen 3 chip, that's actually not too far behind, coming in at 118 and 95. So we're only getting one FPS on average and one on the 1% low over the 5600 with some tuned memory and overclock. So this is just another area where the 3D cache just simply doesn't do anything. Then finally, the most important one to me is the RPCS3 test. And we're doing, once again, Resistance Fall of Man 720p with a 240 FPS cap. We can see the stock X3D gets 93 FPS on average and 51 on the 1% low. That goes up to 97 and 56 with the tuned memory. So definitely tuned memory helps with RPCS3 with the X3D. Uh, and then we can compare that to 121 and 72 on the 12700K. So... This is another area where Alder Lake really shines. When you need CPU processing grunt, especially for things like emulation, there's really no competition here. Even the 12600K with its 118 FPS on average, but it's 73 on the 1% low, will deliver a much smoother experience as the 1% lows are well above 60 FPS, whereas the X3D is below. Now, if we compare to the stock Zen 3 5600, that comes in at 90 and 48. So there is an uplift using the X3D on RPCS3. It's just not as significant as what we see in some other circumstances. All right, so if we take a look at the 12 game average, looking at the 1% lows, we see the stock X3D comes in at 150 FPS on average on those 1% lows. This is actually a pretty nice little bump up over the 131 of an overclock 5600. So there is definitely more performance here over the stock Zen 3. Now that shouldn't be news to anybody. However, even when tuned, that bumps us up only to 156 FPS in comparison to 171 of the 12700K and 167 of the 12600K when tuned and overclocked. So starting with the good news first for AMD, if we're looking at stock versus stock, we have a 4.2% advantage over the 12700K. It's not a big advantage, but it's definitely there. Now, compared to the 12600K stock versus stock, the 5800X3D does have a nice 11% lead over that. So that's definitely a win. And this is definitely the area where the X3D shines is stock versus stock. However, once we start looking at overclocked and tuned numbers, we can see the 2700K has a 9.6% lead over the tuned 5800X3D, so about 10% faster. And even the 12600K, because it gains a massive uplift when tuned and overclocked, even that is 7.1% faster than the tuned and overclocked 5800X3D. And then when compared to the Ryzen 5600 when tuned and overclocked, we do see a 19.1% uplift when tuned and overclocked on the X3D. So that's actually a bit better than what AMD claimed. They claimed a 15% gain. We're showing a 19.1% gain. So actually even better than what AMD claimed. Now hold on to that number, 19.1, just say 20%, 20% more. Uh, when we take a look at the cost of the platform and see if it makes any sort of sense. So if we take a look at the 5800X3D, we're just gonna look at the overclock numbers because it's only $20 more. And honestly, I think you guys would agree at this point in time I've demonstrated it's worth the 20 bucks to get the Samsung b die. Anyways, the 5800X3D is the most expensive platform tested, even with the cheaper motherboard, because the CPUs are so high, coming in at $610. This isn't too far ahead of the 12700K, which comes in at $595, so they're basically the same cost. The big difference is the 12700K is faster and still technically cheaper. Looking at the 12600K, that is significantly less, at over $100 less, and technically faster than the 5800X3D. So that's a real problem. It gets even worse when we take a look at the Ryzen 5600 in comparison. So remember that 19.1% faster? Well, that's gonna end up costing you 87.7% more money to get. So this is the real crutch of the issue here. So the 5800X3D, I like it. It's, it's pretty good. It's just a little wishy-washy. The main problem here is it's so expensive that it just doesn't make any sense. The 5600 is tied as one of the best values with the 12100 in terms of price to performance. And it just 
obliterates the 5800X3D from contention. It's not worth 20% for almost double the money, in my opinion. And there you have it, guys. So we, we have a lot to talk about. So first, we're going to talk about the 5800X3D, my thoughts on that. And then we're going to take a look at basically the whole chart and what makes the most sense. We now have enough data here that if you are in the market, you're looking to build a PC, you can definitively know what makes the most sense to get at virtually every price point. So starting off with the 5800X3D, the first games that I tested were the emulation and StarCraft. Those were literally the first three. And I was just like, man, this is not good. Now, granted, that probably tainted my, my opinions throughout the whole thing, because I'm like, man, this just isn't that much better than Stock Zen 3. That's something that we're all aware of. I'm assuming you guys have seen all the videos and reviews out there. The X3D is just not good across the board. It's good in certain circumstances. To me, that's a real problem when it's the most expensive thing on the chart. And it's good sometimes. It does win. It does beat the Alder Lake CPUs in a couple of games, in three to be exact. So three out of 12, it actually wins. And then it loses, in, unfortunately, and all the rest. And sometimes it loses big. Uh, typically, when it wins, it wins small. And when it loses, it loses big. So for me, it's it's a very hard thing to recommend at the $400 to $450 price point. It's just too expensive for something that is sometimes good. If it was good across the board, then yeah, I could definitely get on board with that and be like, it's fine. Now, if the chip was about $200, I could definitely recommend it instead of having to buy a new platform, getting you know an Alder Lake chip or something like that. The only circumstance that makes more sense is if you're playing competitive games where you need that high FPS all the time, or if you're doing emulation. If you're doing RPCS3 and that's a big deal for you, you should just get rid of AMD. It's just nowhere near as good as what Alder Lake has to offer you. But outside of those two use cases, the X3D would make a decent upgrade if it was priced appropriately. And as I said, $200 is about where this needs to be. In reality, they should just come out with the 5600X3D at $200. Even at $250, it's going to be too expensive because then you're running right up against the 12600K, which will be faster. It's already faster than the 5800X3D when tuned and overclocked. So that's a real problem for AMD. The, 50, the 12600K is an absolute monster for its price point. It's $200 to $250 regularly. You can get the KF. Uh, I think they're like $215 just a few days ago. You can get Z690s now for under $150 new. I had one linked in the deals area on Discord. Uh, I think it was $150 exactly or something like that. But still, you can get those motherboards at very reasonable price points. And for AMD to compete against this, uh, they would just have to have better pricing. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going, okay, well, the X3D, it's pretty good. I might upgrade to it. I might not. I'll probably just get, you know, AM4 and Zen 4. Here's the real crux to that. Zen 4 will likely be better than the X3D because it'll be more consistent across the board, which will raise its overall average percentage. So instead of being, let's say, plus 19% over Zen 3, maybe plus, plus 23, 25%, somewhere in that range. I could definitely see that happening. I could see that being much better for things like RPCS3 and all the areas that I have issues with the X3D. But overall, I still don't really see how Zen 4 is going to overtake Alder Lake. Alder Lake is just so powerful that if you're looking for a monster CPU, if you need that high-end performance, the 12600K is unquestionably the best priced performance CPU that there is out there if you need that high-end performance. Now, if you're looking for something more budget-friendly that will play games, get like 144 FPS on average in most titles, then something like a Ryzen 5600 at $150 is a good way to go, or the i3-12100 for about $99 is the way to go. So in my opinion, those are really the only three CPUs that make sense if you are interested in value. The 12600K will get you that high-end performance at a very reasonable price point, much cheaper than what you can get with AMD's 5800X3D, and you can also get great performance from both AMD's 5600 and the 12100 if you're trying to squeeze the most value out of every dollar. So in my opinion, that's what we found out. Those are really the only three CPUs that are really worth mentioning. On the super high end, obviously there's always diminishing returns. My real issue with the three X3D is the fact that it's really good sometimes, but it's just really not good in others. 
And to be paying such a large premium for that just doesn't make any sense to me. So I would not recommend it at the current price points. Like I said, about $200 makes some sense. So if AMD does a mega discount or something or comes out with a 5600 X3D and you don't want to move over to like an AM5 or an LGA 1700 platform, yeah, go ahead and uh, then it would make sense. I'd say about 200 bucks. The level of performance that you're getting is good. Um, but for right now, I would not be recommending anybody spend premium money for a subpar product. It, it is not the fastest. It's not even close to the fastest. It's not consistent. Don't be paying big time money for it. It's just like I don't recommend anybody buying a 12900K either. You're much better off with the 12700K. But were the results what you were thinking? Good in some games, not so good in others. Uh, were you expecting Alder Lake to pretty much win across the board? It did lose here and there, but it wins nine out of 12. So I, I would definitely say that it is the superior architecture compared to the X3D. And honestly, I think AMD's got a lot of work ahead of them. To me, it's pretty obvious that Alder Lake was kind of out of the blue. People didn't really recognize how fast it was because they didn't tune them properly to see the max performance. But when you do, you notice that it's about two generations ahead of Zen 3. Do you really think that AMD is going to catch up to that with Zen 4? I think that they'll get real close uh, to Alder Lake. I don't honestly think that AMD is going to beat this. It'll get real close. Uh, so I do think that AMD will have uh, real trouble with Raptor Lake come later this year. Plus there's also DDR5 and how expensive that's going to be because you're gonna want 6400 C32 or better. And those are like $400 plus. So it's it's gonna be pretty nuts moving on over to there because the cheaper the memory you use on DDR5, the slower uh, everything's gonna be, as you can see from the tests. I think we've definitively shown that Samsung B-Die is a benefit to all DDR4 platforms at this point, even the 5800X3D, even though it's minor, I'd say it's worth the extra 20 bucks. But already, guys, those are just my thoughts. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. What, what are your take on the outcomes here? Were you expecting uh, Intel to be that dominating? Were you expecting the X3D to catch up as well as it did? It's a very good chip. It was definitely kind of a stopgap measure, in my opinion. You can kind of see that. But I want to hear your thoughts at this point in time. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the stuff. If you want to join the conversation and continue to support testing like this, you can do so by clicking the little join button down below or clicking the Patreon link in the video description get you access to the discord server where you get kind of tidbits of this information before it goes live in videos like this and i get your guys feedback and opinions on things i love chatting with you guys about this stuff so all right guys that's really all i have for you here today hope you enjoyed this series we'll start something new here in the not too distant future and yeah that's all i have for you here today i'll catch you guys in the next video